I'm going to throw this on there too. This is just a belt I'm making for somebody. Mahogany Ranger belt for a 38 inch waist. And these belts generally run about $75. Um, I make them to order. I don't usually throw them up on Amazon or eBay or a gun broker. Sometimes I do. And I got some holsters that I'm making, so I may throw one or two belts up there too. But I like it when y'all ask for thick. You want a thick belt? That's thick. That's almost a quarter inch thick. And then when you throw in the ends, yeah, that's that's over a quarter inch thick. I hope you have some uh, belt loops that'll accommodate that. But I, I love making these uh, thick ranger belts. I usually use a uh, eight, nine ounce strap and then a six, seven ounce strap. So uh, that about 14, 14 ounces, um, it's pretty thick. <laughs> as I said so yeah uh, if you want one of these ranger belts hit me up I really like making these things and again over here some of my uh, buck 110 sheaths be coming out soon I threw some of the seconds that I had made up on uh, eBay this weekend so if you're looking for a nice sheath but uh, got a little cosmetic errors and isn't going to break the bank uh, check those out I think I got about six or seven of those up on uh, eBay this part of the video specifically for Mike Mike I didn't forget about you buddy uh, I got a couple of uh, right side 605 holsters uh, in the making so this is just two this one's in uh, British tan and this one is in a uh, satin black so <laughs> I know it's been a while but I've been busier than a one-legged man in a butt kicking contest so uh, these should be dropping pretty soon keep an eye out um, more than likely these will go up on eBay and Amazon uh, so if you're paying attention, Mike, uh, sorry about the delay, but here you go. Now let's get on to some other stuff I have to show the rest of y'all. This right here is my Buck 110 sheath. And I'm working on several of these designs. Um, there are some things I still need to fix. At least on this one, the uh, logo is right side up. And... I still want to put the uh, stitching a little closer to the edge so it doesn't quite have this flip up. I'm not sure it's going to bother anything, but it's just an aesthetic thing. And this particular case I wanted to show because it's in a gloss. I don't normally do gloss, but this, uh, this is a gloss I like. I mean, that is really glossy. Uh, you know, I talk about spit shine shoes or you know spit shine leather uh, that's what this comes out as <clears throat> if I had had this uh, stuff and knew about it when I was in the army uh, <laughs> my inspections would have gone, gone a lot smoother uh, for my boots but uh, here we go I wanted to just show this uh, this particular gloss finish because it's the best I've ever used uh, this is hands down the best gloss finish I've ever seen it is like glass and let me show you the stuff that I'm using uh, with the echo flow top finish I had never used this before and somebody recommended it because I had a customer who wanted a holster reproduction that was gloss and uh, I was just at a loss as to how to do the gloss finish but uh, I found this stuff and man like I like I said this is just like glass this is a great finish and so I may be doing some stuff in gloss with a gloss finish uh, 
if you like gloss, you would have to request it. Because like I said, most of what I do is in subdued, uh, a satin, or something less flashy. But uh, I really like this. So if you want it in gloss, let me know. And uh, I'd be more than happy to put a coat of this or two on it for you. And, and you'll, be, you'll be happy. Because this, yeah, class. I'm telling you. Just like class. And here we can see the Buck 110 is uh, snugly in that sheath. It's not going anywhere. You got your riveted sides right at the top. So this isn't going to come apart. This isn't going to fray and uh, start coming apart on you. This is all bonded nylon cord. So that's not going to come apart on you. Uh, you would have to cut this sheath apart uh, to get it apart. So in the field, uh, if you're somebody who works outside a lot or, you know, doing something where your knife goes in and out of the sheath quite a bit, then uh, this, this sheath is for you. This replacement sheath is for you. It will stand up. And yes, I do back these. Um, if the rivets come out, if the snap comes undone, if it starts unraveling, send it back. I will repair it or replace for free at my discretion. All right, let me show you something else I'm working on. All right, most of y'all, when you contact me for a belt, are stating your belt size as your waist size on your pants. So when you go to whatever store you go to and get that pair of Wranglers, um, and it says a Slavette <laughs> Slim 32, and you tell me that's your waist size, well, that's not quite accurate. So let me show you how you can really tell me what your waist size is. So we'll start at this end, and it's at the end of the buckle that you're going to start right here. And then we're going to measure all the way down. Try and keeping the belt as straight as possible. We all know it bends uh, there at the back, so it's no big deal. But you're going to go to the most used hole on the belt. Where, what hole do you use the most? Um, yeah, so in this case, I'm going to go to this hole, and that's going to be a 38. So when I measure your new belt, I'm going to cut it for 38 inches. Because if I cut it for the waist size on my pants, then I would be cutting it here. Because the belt size goes from the end of the buckle To the most used hole, oh, here we are, sorry about that. So the most used hole, and then about four or more inches, four and a half to five more inches past that. Now I like to leave a longer billet, which is this end that goes into the keep and the buckle. So I usually do about six to eight inches. Um, that's standard for me. That's not like the approved method but I like to leave a little extra billet because who knows you may have that one turkey dinner that uh, you know makes you grow a couple inches that's all right you want, you want to have a couple notches on that belt to accommodate that turkey dinner but please please when you order a belt for me do not state your waist size as your pant size um, that's what you're going to measure. And let me show you why. So here we are with another one of my Ranger belts that I made recently for a customer who stated that his waist size was 38 inches. And this was all complete, all done for the customer, ready to go. And uh, I always have him try it on. 
because I know how that goes. I don't have people just come by the house and, and pick it up and go. I always have them try it on. So he stated his waist size was 38. And in fact, that was not the case. So I have to make another belt, which I don't mind. And these belts go pretty quick. But it would have been better if he came and was able to take the belt home. I would have been happy. He would have been happy. And that's it. Did he get to see the, the quality of the belt? Yes, he did. Did he get to see that uh, it was thick and well made? Yes, he did. But it's not the same as seeing it, being able to put it on and wear it home. So I'll be knocking him out a new belt, and this one will probably go up on Gunbroker. I'm also going to make a pre-order uh, belt auction on Gunbroker, or not an auction. They'll they'll be uh, they'll be reasonably priced. These these belts like this, I'm uh, selling for seventy five dollars. These are $75 belts. It is, a, in fact, a Ranger belt. So if you had a different buckle like this, you could, in fact, replace that buckle. Uh, I'll have pictures um, on my advertisement. But what pre-order is, is uh, you'll pay for the belt, and it'll be delivered to you in about two weeks. And uh, there'll be some caveats, because like I said, I need to know your true waist size. Uh, not not what your pant size is so um, you'll have to take a, a measurement of your current belt but uh, if you're looking for one of these Ranger belts um, standard with no tooling these go for about 75 bucks and you can see the it's got the buckle and then the snap on the back uh, let me undo this so you can see the snapping part so on the Ranger belt, you can see that there's a keep here, and that's for the back of the belt, and then a keep for the billet, and then the buckle goes through a hole, and it's snapped. So you could replace that buckle if you want, um, depending on the type of buckle. It's it's got to have a tongue on it like this, a tongue and bar, so. Uh, but this is the this is the standard buckle that I ship it with uh, for 75. So, and if you want tooling or something special on it, then it goes up from there. But uh, I was in contact with a gentleman recently who was mad because uh, I told him that I require a deposit on special order belts. And he told me I was dishonest. <laughs> Let me tell you something about a deposit. A deposit protects me as the person making the item because it shows sincerity on your part. That you're not just going to order something, disappear, and say, oh yeah, I got it from Joe down the street. So that's my part. The other part is the deposit protects you because you've already given me money. So I have an obligation to deliver to you and I have an obligation to deliver within a reasonable time frame of what we agreed upon so please don't take a deposit as me being dishonest or grabbing your money before I make you anything um, I've been here a while I'm planning to be here a while longer so um, a deposit protects both of us don't 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 get rubbed the wrong way about a deposit it is a business transaction. You are commissioning me to make you a uh, item, a custom-made item just for you. So if you got heartburn with uh, deposits, you know, I'm sure there's other people who will make stuff for you without one. Uh, I just think it's uh, too risky to do that on both our ends. All right, moving on. Uh, let's uh, show that uh, AK... Uh, pouch that I was talking about because I made some mistakes on that last time. So I was talking about the AK pouch last time and how it held four magazines and that is incorrect. 
this particular AK magazine pouch holds five magazines. And now I'm at a dilemma if I want to make one that holds two magazines or three magazines. And I think I'm leaning towards two because again the whole point of this is to cut down on the weight so that it can be comfortable to carry and still give you a lot of rounds available quickly. I haven't decided how to do the pattern for that. I probably want to do a make along video where we make the pattern together and then uh, we cut it out and make it out of uh, whatever leather you want. I'm going to probably make the first one of these out of four or five ounce leather. Is that too light for a bag like this? Absolutely it is. But again, um, the heavier you go in leather weight, the more expensive it is. So I don't want to make a train wreck on the first one out of the heaviest leather I can find. But once I do get this down, and I'll probably go 6-7 because that'll be light enough to uh, carry every day, but still rugged enough to, to get out there and, and be carried every day and, and not come apart. And like I said, I do want to incorporate all the riveting because the riveting will give, give it added strength. And I will be incorporating these pouches. Now I was getting started on this and again somebody came and uh, asked me about something else and I'll show it to you. So this is my checkbook cover uh, which I haven't made many of lately for obvious reasons. Uh, <laughs> don't know many people writing checks. When I did make these, these did sell and uh, this was my default design was the Texas design I also had one with armadillos but uh, as you can see it's got a little flap here for you know receipts and things like that and then on this inside it had a see-through um, panel and then you would put your check with its uh, back because there, there's two checks usually so you have a copy of each check you write and you would put this flap over so you could write on that particular check and it wouldn't imprint on the other checks behind it so uh, I sold a couple of these but they, they you know weren't my best sellers and long before that I made this this was a supposed to be like a lady's clutch with all card slots but the leather I used when I did this is just too thick so uh, I'll replace that inner leather but this is just about the right length for a long wallet or what people call a biker's wallet um, something like that so I've had a couple requests to make a long wallet and include for whatever reason a, ch a place to put checks like that somebody could carry their checkbook and have it in the same wallet um, and you would think that's unusual nowadays because most people don't carry checks but I've had a couple requests for that so uh, uh, that's what I'm working on and I'll show the pattern so like I said, there's many designs for this long wallet or biker's wallet as there are people because people want different stuff. But the one I saw that I liked had a um, had this, which is a see-through window for your driver's license. And then on all my wallets or card holders, I put a secret panel behind that so that you can stuff uh, something behind your uh, driver's license that may be important to you that you need to have. Um, it opens on the side so not the same as the driver's license which you put in through the top which uh, makes it harder to fall out. So. Uh,
then on this side will be these T pockets and there'll be T pockets for credit cards on like a little flap so this flap will you'll be able to oh, here comes that wind again hold on spring in San Antonio come on summer all right so you'll fold over so you fold this flap up like this and then the checkbook would be on the back um, now you don't have to have a checkbook you can have something else there probably I'll just make another pocket the other thing I'm thinking about doing is behind this is putting a zippered pocket and so let me tell you all about all those people who want a zippered pocket I know that y'all like zippered pockets I like a zippered pocket but a zippered pocket adds cost because doing zippers is not easy and a lot of people don't incorporate them for that reason that it's just not easy to do zippers but on this particular long wallet I may include a zipper um, that's going to put it close to the hundred dollar range because just the complexity of making this versus a belt or versus uh, ammo pouches this is pretty complex it has a lot of intricate cuts it had us a lot of um, assembly time that you can't do just by machine I'm not a Chinese factory so uh, I'm gonna get this done I'll have one up and y'all can take a look and uh, we'll see if you like it but uh, that's my updates for this uh, couple weeks hope y'all are doing great this is John from Big Chief Leatherworks and y'all have a blessed weekend